I'm Grant Swaim, an automotive instructor at Gifford Technical Community College here in Jamestown, North Carolina. And today I'm going to do a video on uh, real world diagnostics of a relay control circuit. And we'll be using the Pontex Sultus, which is part of the uh, GM ASIP program here at our campus. And we're going to look at the horn circuit, which is pretty typical of a relay control circuit. And then if you look at uh, power control or power management over the years, it's really evolved a lot in the car industry. Uh, earlier systems, basically the power would go into the cabin of the car. Uh, for instance, some of the early cars with the uh, steering wheel on the stalk, the power would go all the way into the car up steering column, out to the knob at the end of the stalk, and then back out to the headlights. But uh, over years, we've changed that. Now we're seeing a lot of relay usage, the relay and underhood fuse box so that the power goes to the battery to the fuse box, and from there can be sent directly to a load and remotely controlled by a small current from inside the car. We've even seen it evolve into multiplex systems where you have like a headlight control assembly or a headlight uh, module in front of the car which contains the lights and it actually contains a uh, uh, control module that powers the light directly at the, at, the, at the headlight assembly and then it gets its marching orders from a the headlight switch which is sending a uh, binary uh, data over a data link. But today we're going to look at a relay control circuit. And you'd be better off also to go back and look at uh, re Relay Fundamentals, another video I made. Make sure that you understand the, the fundamentals. And what we're going to look at today is how could I, real quickly, using some uh, basic tools and just understand a relay, how can I real quickly diagnose uh, a relay. So let's reposition the camera and get started. Okay, let's take a closer look at this uh, underhood fuse box on this Pontiac Sultus. I pull the lid off and I see information on the back side which is going to help us. Remember we're tracking down a, a horn that's inoperative. So I come down here and find uh, that the horn is 55. I'm sure it's too sh small to show up on the video. But it's showing 55. And then I come around and acclimate our schematic to our fuse box. And I see that 55 is this relay sitting there on the corner. So I want to pull these other two relays out just to make it easier for the video to see what's going on. And this is our horn relay. Now we're going to first look at assuming that the uh, we press the horn button, the relay energizes, and the horns don't blow. So what we want to do is called jumping relay. We're going to pull the relay and temporarily replace the relay contacts with a straight wire or conduit to see if the horns will blow. Now you'll notice this is a, on a four. This is a normally open four-pin relay, and they're on a quad or exact rectangle pattern. There's no index, so I can pull the relay out. And actually turn half a turn and put it back in. So at first thought you may say, well, that's not a, a good engineering uh, plan there because you could uh, put this in the wrong way. But it's very clever in that they've actually got diagonally the coil and the contact on a diagonal. So if I pull this out and turn half a turn and put it back in, it's the same thing. It's just the current will go the opposite direction. And since they coil and they said contacts have no polarity, it's not an issue. Now, as far as knowing which are the coil, which are the contacts, I do have a schematic on edge, or we can always bring in an ohm meter. So let's go to ohms. And remember on ohm meter, if we have no continuity, it's going to read uh, over limit OL on the readout. When I do have continuity, it's going to calibrate and hopefully come down to zero, or very low number. It'll bounce around between zero and 0.1 ohms. So we can come in and grab, we know it's diagonal, so let's grab this corner and this corner over here. And we have OL, so this would be our contacts is that are open right now. If I switch around to the other two, we find 83 ohms, and that's our winding. Now, if, when you do, uh, when you look at this, you'll discover that when I roll this relay back down, it's the top lift and top right, the top lift and bottom right are your contacts. Then top right, bottom left are your coil. Right now I'm going to jump a wire from the top left to bottom right to confirm if the power side of the relay is okay. In words, if I put this jump wire in there and the horns blow, we know that the horns are good, the horn power circuit's good, the horn feed, all that's, all that's good. So we come in, and all I'm going to do is bump against the edge of the terminal. I just use some primary wire stripped back. We don't want to force anything into the receiver, and Chance open the receiver up. We just want to slide in here and bump the edge of the terminal. And we'll do that. 
we get an audible horn is now working. So we just proven we've just proven that uh, the horn on the power side is fine. And if the relay was in fact clicking, energizing, and the horn was not blowing, and then we just made the horn blow by jumping across there, we've made we've proven that this relay is bad. The other only other variable you have would be the control side and. Uh, if this is not clicking, we need to come and confirm that we have 12 volts across top right, bottom left when you're pressing the horn button. If you don't, you've got to track down a problem on the control side, either power coming to the relays cool or power going back to ground. So that's a way that you can real quickly do some uh, real-world diagnostics. That's a wrap.